Hey everybody, Ryan here at eTrailer. Today on our 2003 Ford E-Series cutaway van, we're gonna be showing you how to install the Kurt front mount trailer hitch receiver. But before we get into that, let's just take a minute, check this out and make sure it's gonna work for you. Whenever you're over the road, you know, storage is uh, precious more or less. You know, you're trying to make do with what you got. And uh, a lot of people overlook being able to keep things on the front of their RV uh, when they're traveling. And having a hitch up here is, is really gonna open up your opportunities. So, um, you know, what, what we see a lot of people do nowadays is flat towing. So they'll pull a vehicle behind the motor home or another trailer with their car on it. And so that kind of takes up everything back there. But up here with a hitch, now you can carry your bikes around. You know, if you, uh, uh, you know, have some bikes for the family, you put a bike rack or maybe a spare tire carrier or a good example, uh, what our neighbor's doing here today, um, they have a scooter that they're uh, gonna be using. So they'll have a carrier up here where they can put their scooter or, or other goods, maybe a cooler, generator, things along those lines. The hitch is gonna have a two inch by two inch receiver tube opening, uh, which is pretty much standard size. You know, a lot of different things are gonna work with it. It's gonna use the standard 5 8 pin and clip. One does not come included with it though, if you need one, not a big deal. You can grab it here at e-trailer. And a little bit further off to the sides, there are going to be some hooks on the hitch. If you need to use those for whatever reason, you know, if you need to tow or, or to uh, pull something, those are always uh, available to use. As far as the weight capacities go, it's going to have a 500 pound maximum gross tongue weight rating. So that's the amount of weight pushing down on the hitch. Uh, kind of the standard. Uh, capacity there and a lot of different cargo carriers and bike racks and things uh, will work with it. It's going to have a 5,000 pound uh, gross trailer weight rating which um, you know this probably isn't important to a lot of people but the amount of weight pulling on it so whether your trailer something you might have on it if you're going to be you know shuttling it around moving it around in your yard or something and then it also has a 9,000 pound line pull um, and what that means that's really targeted to use with like uh, snow plows and, or I'm sorry, uh, winches, things like that, where the vertical line pulls is pulling on it. So uh, that information's there if you need it, but you know, for those of you using those different types of accessories and things, this is gonna get the job done. Now we can grab a couple of measurements and these will help you figure out what type of accessories will work from the ground to the top inside edge of the receiver tube opening. That's gonna be about 14 and a half inches. So if you can find uh, an accessory that has a slight rise in the shank, probably not a bad idea, uh, but you know, it's high enough off the ground too that, that a straight one will work as well. From the center of the hitch pin hole to the edge of the rear bumper, that's about six inches. And you can use that to help figure out that if any folding type accessories you might have can be stored upright and not hit the front of the vehicle. Other than that though, you know, if you're uh, trying to kind of open up and, and expand on your storage and what you can do with your vehicle, uh, this is something you really can't go wrong with. As far as the installation goes, wasn't too bad. Um, everything's pretty easy to get to. You will have to enlarge a couple of holes in the frame. So definitely recommend having a, a sharp drill bit and uh, some type of grinding bit that you can use. It'll really speed things up, but you know, that's, that's really the most complicated part about it. You can do this on the ground as well. But uh, if you'd like to see how it's done, feel free to hang around. We'll go ahead and install it together now. To begin our installation, we're gonna be here at the front of our Ford. Now I did jack our uh, vehicle up off the ground a little bit, uh, just to give us a little bit of extra space to work. And if you do that, make sure you're safe about it. You know, chalk the tires, use the appropriate equipment. But, um, you know, I feel like this definitely can be done on the ground too. I just be a little bit tired, but with that said, uh, we're gonna be working first off, just right underneath uh, the front of our vehicle. So right underneath, if you have this plastic flash guard, we're gonna need to remove that. And so on each end of it, there's gonna be a plastic push pin fastener that you need to pull out. So you can use a trim tool or uh, a screwdriver and work underneath the head of it. I'm able to kind of pry it out. And I already took the other side out. It's 
So once you get that removed, or both of them rather, this should drop down and we can set it out of the way. If you look at the frame, we're gonna have two attachment points that we're gonna to use to secure our hitch. We're gonna have this elongated uh, hole here and then this small one closest to the front bumper. Uh, but we're gonna to have to enlarge this one, that way our bolt and hardware can actually pass through there. So uh, I'll take my drill bit and get it opened up to the proper size. With that hole enlarged, now we can open up this one a little bit too. And that's because we're gonna be using that as an access hole to get our hardware up in the frame. So our spacer block fits just fine, but the head of the bolt is too big to pass through there. So I'm going to come in with a grinding bit and open this up a little bit on each side, stopping every now and again until we get it just big enough for the bolt head to pass through. You could do this with a hand file, you know, probably take you some time. So if you had a power tool I like this, it definitely helps speed things up. Just big enough to get the head of the bolt through there. You don't want to push it all the way up in place just yet. <clears throat> just make sure it'll actually be able to go through there. And since we exposed some bare metal, I'm just going to take some spray paint, put a light coating on it to help protect against uh, any rust. Take one of your fish wires, run that through that opening there, and you want it to come out of the hole that we enlarged. So a lot of times you'll have to reach up in there and, and help it out. Then you're going to put on a spacer block and then thread on carriage bolt. And you can feed the hardware one at a time up into the frame. And then drop it down. And I'm gonna carefully remove this one. They only give you two fish wires, so be careful not to mess these up. So we'll unthread this one. And then take another spacer block, another carriage bolt, and we're going to reverse fish wire this one. So we'll put the head of the bolt in first, and then the spacer block, drop it down. And I think I'm going to move our pull wire to this bolt, being that it's a little bit tighter over here. Uh, I feel like it'd be beneficial to leave leave it on over here. That way if you go to put the hitch up and this bolt pushes up into the frame, you know it's not gonna be stuck up there. So that's my thought. I'll just put that one right back on. Now with the help uh, from Kevin here, we're gonna take our pull wires, feed them through the corresponding holes in the hitch. And then we can raise this up into position. We'll hold it flat against the frame and then you can take a flange nut. And we want to get at least one started on each side. That way the hitch will support itself. you can put the other flange nut on the other bolt and then come back with a three quarter inch or 19 millimeter socket and snug everything down. Once all the hardware is snug, don't forget to come back and torque it all down to the amount specified in the instructions. And that'll finish up our look at and our installation of the Kurt front mount trailer hitch receiver on our 2003 Ford E-Series cutaway.